welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I still don't know. What I do know, however, is that this particularly striking green look was achieved with the help of this palette that I picked up from Wish at an absolute bargain price. So, if you want to see, so trying to get this so that you can actually see, I love holographic packaging, but my lord, it's difficult. I think you can just about see it. There we go. So, if you want to see exactly how this did this, then my friend, you are in exactly the right place. It comes a tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Uh, expect the white balance to go up and down throughout this because A, it's quite early in the morning and B, it's quite cloudy over there but it keeps clearing and then clouding and clearing and clouding. I have been waiting a little while to see if it will settle to either, either one or the other but it's not. So I'm just going to hope my camera can keep up. I will have shown you this, love that holographic packaging, uh, in the intro which... Yes, we all know what palette it's meant to be, but if you're a long-term viewer, I've got um, <clears throat> hair and uh, powder down my cleavage. Uh, don't ask. This is by the now. There's there's a lot of different <laughs> still with the holographic. There's a lot of different brands. I'm like a magpie, and I just like oh shiny that have done copies of this. Now, if they're claiming to be a Huda palette, I don't touch them with a barge pole, as you know. But straight up copies where it clearly mentions the brand on the front, which if I can tilt this about right, there you go. Um, Fumar D, I'm guessing. That's the Welsh in me coming out. Um, it's basically two sponge things so it's quite squidgy with cardboard on it has got a magnetic closure it's got one of these clear plastic things which I'm just going to bin because it doesn't have a mirror but you can see it's not a bad dupe I tilt it so you can actually see the colours there you go now <clears throat> I have taken photographs of this I had to do it under artificial light because the light today is so bad so I'll put those up now uh, one swatch with flash, one swatch without. So you can see there seems to be a fair amount of pigment happening <clears throat> in this palette. And back to me. Hello. So you know which palette we're going to be using today. Well, of course you do. You even know how this is going to finish because you'll have seen me in the intro. So you got one up on me. So let's get zoomed in. How's your day been so far? I do hope it's been a good one, or if it's at the start of your day, I hope it's going to be a good one. This eye keeps running like mad, so you'll have to forgive me if I keep poking at it. Now, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF, because yes, I even do that in the winter. Um, actually, the SPF is included in my moisturiser, so I can't forget it. Uh, and then I have gone over it with my usual facial antiperspirant that I buy from Amazon, which as you can see has primer qualities. I have got a film, a short mini tutorial on that, uh, if you're more interested in learning why I use it, how I use it, etc. Now, as a test, I've also, on one half of my face, used this Catrice Prime and Fine Paulis Blur Primer. Goodbye, Pauls. Um, just to see, I, when I'm t trying a new primer, I do tend to use it just on half of my face, uh, because then I can see whether or not it will work with 
my foundation or if it's just you know um, and I put whichever primer I'm going to use on first and then the antiperspirant over the top once that primer's dried down because I have found if you put another primer on top of the antiperspirant you get pilling and balling and then your foundation just looks bloody awful <clears throat> I don't use a separate eyelid pri primer I can't speak this morning I don't use a separate eyelid primer because although I've got um, fairly oily eyelids uh, I have tried different eyelid primers and they don't really give me any longer wear time or any less creasing than putting a good uh, thick concealer on like the Revolution Pro one or the uh, Concealer and Define or I've still got some Tarte Shape Tape knocking around from ages ago <clears throat> before I embargoed myself from buying from them. So I've literally just got concealer and I've set it with the Coty Airspun Translucent Powder. If you've got very very oily eyelids or very very dry eyelids you may find that an eyelid primer works better for you. That's something you're going to have to find out for yourself I'm afraid. Get some samples from um, if you, normally if you buy a couple of lipsticks from someone like Urban Decay they'll send you samples of their different primers including a tinted one which I have tried um, <clears throat> because where I've got such deep set eyes I've always got dark circles and I've always got discoloration on my eyes where the capillaries are so close to the surface right now time for the bit that all of my old school viewers will probably be able to say with me word for word but for all my newbies hi hello welcome uh, when I look straight ahead you can see all of my mobile lid so I don't have hooded eyes however if you can't see throw my flipping brushes around now if you can't see all of that lid just rub a different brush then if you can't see all of this then you potentially have either a half a full or what's known as a mono lid or an Asian eye you can still follow my tutorial all you have to do with your eye open and with a flat brush like this or the one that I've just thrown away uh, just really gently sketch out where you need your crease to fall now that will of course reduce the space between your crease colour and your brow so there's a number of ways we can get around this I'm going to be using these two brushes today for blending this nice big fluffy one and then going down to a slightly more tapered one so what I suggest you do is that you start with this one it might take you a little bit longer than me to do your blending because obviously it's a smaller head to it but then it won't blast it out quite so far you'll have more control and then when I go from this one to this one you need to go from this to something like this which although it looks like a pencil brush you can see it's really loosely packed it's actually a tapered crease brush and you can see you can just use just the very tip so you have a lot more control about just exactly how far you're going to do your blending right I'm going to pause you fractionally while I pick that brush up and I will be back you're probably not even going to notice that I've gone. Did you miss me? Hmm? Did you? Go on, you can be honest, I won't cry. Right. Now, these are my options. So these are not named. So I'm probably just going to show you which colours I'm going to go in with. Now you can, of course, go in and do quite a neutral look using this through your crease and smoking it up and then popping either this one or this one on the lid but uh, we know I don't really do neutral on this channel on this channel so uh, greens blues and purples which happen to be my favorite shades also happen to be the shades that are the most difficult to create so I want to try these greens out I'm going to start off with this one then I'm going to deepen with that one and then probably go into this one which I know is a shimmer but I'm still going to use it through my crease because depending on the brush you use you can still get a really good finish with a shimmer <clears throat> and then um, I'll probably go into either this one or this one for the lid so shall we get started I've got my colour switch here for 
changing colours. This was just a cheap one that I bought from Amazon, uh, yeah, Amazon or eBay for about four quid. Um, there's not a lot of kick up in this pan actually. I'm quite impressed with that. <clears throat> quite firmly packed. Um, if you haven't got one of those, you can just use a towel or a face cloth or a flannel or something to just clean the colour off your brushes. I know the brush looks dirty, I promise you it's clean, it's just stained. So we're going to start off on the outside corner here and I'm going to follow the shape of my socket. If you've had to lay a new crease line down, you follow that line. And we're just going to run backwards and forwards very gently in a windscreen wiper movement. Just to lay some pigment down. And I'm going to go back into that shade and pick up a bit more colour. And then we're going to do little circles. Because I'm 44 and I've lost an awful lot of weight, over 10 stone. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it means your eyelids move. So, the reason we do circles is because it moves the skin on your eyelids around. When you get to here, reverse the direction and come back again, a little bit higher up than you were before. And because I've got deep set eyes and I've got a lot of space to play with, I can go up a third time and come back with a third row, or up a second time and back for a third row. Now you can see, it's not laid a huge amount of pigment down. So, we're going to go in and we're going to add some more pigment, doing exactly what we did before, little circular movements just to lay the pigment down and just see if we can actually get any colour to build up on the eye, because um, some palettes are designed that the colour goes on sheer but can be built up which can be frustrating if you're like me and you like a lot of colour straight away but if you're a beginner it can be really really helpful because you don't suddenly get a wallop of pigment that you've then got to blend out I and mean, you can see this is slowly building up and giving me a bit more depth of colour on the eye and I'm just doing lots of circular movements all over just to blend and I keep dipping back into the palette every so often to add more pigment to my brush but I mean you can see it is taking a while to to build up but it is building but of course you do need to bear in mind that if you're having to use this much powder each time A it's going to take you a lot longer to do your face and B you are probably going to hit pan a lot quicker than you would do that being said this palette cost me three quid. So am I going to complain about a three pound palette if I can hit pan on it quickly? No. No I'm not. Not when the Huda version is like 29 quid. So you know, tenth of the price. I don't mind spending a bit of extra time building the colour up. Now, once you've got the colour to the intensity that you want, we're now going to do uh, again the windscreen wiper movement, but we're going to go up and down just to make sure we've got it all blended out we're going to sort of overlap ourselves as we go up and down just to make sure that there's no white areas left on our blend now you can see I have left a gap at the top I like to leave at least sort of four or five mils below the lowest part of my brow um, so that when I put my brow bone highlight on you can actually see the brow bone highlight. So, I'm now going to do the same with this eye. Um, I can actually close this eye, which means you'll probably be able to see better what I'm doing. Because I'm blinding this eye. And where it got pulled around a lot of the ophthalmic hospital when I was like, you know, five, six years old. I have got permanent creasing here. Which, I don't know if this light shade is going to show you, but I end up with like tiger striping or barcoding here. Now, normally for most people, doing the circular movements as we did on the first on this eye will normally sort that out. But unfortunately, because these creases are so deep and so permanent, um, I do have to very gently um, make the skin on the eyelid a bit more taut 
in order to blend it out so I don't recommend you do that um, if you don't have to if the circular movement if doing this will work for you then please do this instead because if you start putting the skin on your eyelid around and stretching it out you will end up with the same problem as me and trust me them creases only get worse so, yay. Deep joy. So you can see, this one actually packed more colour on first time round, mainly because um, I, did, I haven't been tapping my brush off because it's so firmly packed. I thought, right, okay, because it's taking a while to get the pigment on, I'm not going to tap my brush off. I haven't done my base yet anyway, so it's really not an issue if I get fallout. Um... So to try and speed things up a bit because I don't speed up my blending, I don't, the only things I tend to do off camera are mascara because we all know how to put mascara on, uh, if I'm going to do liner I'll normally do that off camera because I normally end up going off screen like this looking down at my mirror but I have got a separate liner tutorial so if you do want to do a liner and you want to know the easy way to do a wing liner I have got a tutorial for that uh, and I'll sometimes do my lippy off camera as well because let's face it we've all put lipstick on sometimes I do my lipstick on screen because I show you my tip for um, how to get lipstick on using a doe foot applicator if you're unsure of them uh, because there is a way of using them where you can really emphasize your cupid's bow or give yourself a cupid's bow if you haven't already got one so there you can see I've got both sides pretty much the same now. So I am going, you can see when I tapped off a lot of it was coming off. So I thought, you know what, I'd rather have that pigment on here than in here. So I'm just going to clean my brush off on the colour switch. And then I'm going to go in to this screen here using exactly the same brush and we're going to start off in exactly the same way one thing I have noticed with these is the pans are an awfully long way down as you can see they were a real bugger to swatch with these nails I tell you I had such trouble actually getting down to them um, Yeah. so we're going to start off again on the outside corner and gently run that through our crease. Okay, that's got a little bit more pigment to it. Gently run that through the crease. And then pick up a bit more colour. Now, last time when we did this, we went across, we went up, we came back, we went up, we came back. This time, the bottom of the bristles need to be in contact with that line all the way across. And when we get to here, we're still going to reverse direction, but we're going to keep contact with that line to come back again. Because having worked so damn hard to get that green down there, we don't want to cover it all up. So, little gentle movements. I'm holding the brush right at the end, so I'm putting as little pressure as possible on my eyes. And we're going to blend across to the middle, reverse direction and blend back again. You can see this has got a lot more pigment to it, this one. It's actually performing quite well. So once I'm happy with the depth of pigment, I'm going to clean the colour of the brush. I'm going to go back into the really, really light one again. And I'm very gently going to do little circles with this lighter colour right on the edge where that green meets the mint green underneath. Just to really gently soften that line and gently blend it into the lighter green without losing any of the light green that we worked so hard to pack down. Okay. 
Although, to be honest, it does seem to have lost quite a bit of colour here. Let's just pack a little bit more of that uh, lighter green back on up here, shall we? There we go. There's no mistakes in makeup, just happy little accidents. So, you can see now there. I'm just going to actually drag down gently. I, don't, I normally advise going upwards to give you a nice sweeping upward arch, but this time. I'm going to gently blend down onto that green. There we go. I think that's held onto that colour there better. And now we're going to do exactly the same thing on this eye. So again, start at the outside. I can follow the shape of my socket. If you've had to move your line up, then please follow your line. And I'll just see if this will show you better now. There, can you see what I mean about the tiger striping and the barcoding? And I just have to very, very gently, and I mean very, very gently, buff this corner just to get rid of that. Because that is a dead giveaway that you're getting older. If you've put makeup on and there are gaps where it's skipped because the skin on your eyelid has moved. Um, I really don't advise pencil liners once you're over the age of sort of 35. Unless you've been blessed with very, very taut skin. They're okay for the waterline, but for the upper line they do tend to drag and skip. Or at least they do on my skin. So again, just little tiny circular movements, keeping in touch with that first line that we laid down. Just gently, gently, smudging that colour out and blending it, just to give it a nice softened effect. And then I'm going to go back into the lighter one again, and again. Put up a little bit of colour on this corner, and then very, very gently blend down to the green, and little tiny circles here, just to gently soften that edge and give us a nice seamless blend. Just so that one colour very gently flows into the next. Okay. I am now going to go down to my more tapered blender. If you've started with this, now is the time to go down to your tapered crease brush. <clears throat> so I'm going to go in, which of these is actually the darkest? Let's have a look. Uh, that's the three shimmers I'm looking at. I think that top one is going to be the darkest. So, I'm going to come into this one here. Initially, I'm just going to tap this on the outside corner. Just to gently lay some pigment down. About a third of the way along the eyelid is all you need to do. I'm actually looking down to try and, and tilting my head back so you can actually see what's going on. Because obviously if I close this eye, I can't see anything at all. So you very gently tap that on. And then give a very, very, very light buff to it because being a shimmer they're not designed to be blended out like this they're designed to just be packed on but using a blending brush you can actually use them I mean I've done a whole shimmer look before now so so I've picked up some more pigment on the brush and I'm really gently I'm still doing windscreen wipers but I'm doing little tiny windscreen wipers right the way across to the inner corner and right the way back out 
day. Because you... It's... It's reminding me to take some tablets, but I took them just before I started. So, you will expect to get fallout from shimmers when you're blending them like this. This is why I haven't done my foundation yet, because I, I wasn't sure how much fallout we were going to get. As it happens, so far we've not got too much, but I'm expecting a lot more on this side, because the skin does move an awful lot more this side. Now, um, whereas before we added more colour to do the blend, this time we're going to take all the colour off. We're just going to blend what we've already put down. <clears throat> and whereas before we had... I've got to sweep that fallout away, it's bugging me. Whereas before, we kept the bottom of the bristles in line with the line that we'd laid down. This time we don't really want to blend that line up at all because if we do we're going to lose that green so we're literally just going to blend tiny 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 little circles along the line that we've laid down now this will soften the edges ever so gently but it won't blend it up the eye so tiny tiny little circles holding a brush right at the very end Tiny, tiny, tiny little circles backwards and forwards along that crease line. Just to gently blur that deeper shade that we've put down. And then just gently link it up with the corner there. So you can see that actually gives a really nice effect to the eye. So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other eye. So I've packed pigment on and I'm just gently tapping it on the outer third of the eye. And giving a very gentle buff. And then picking up more pigment and I'm going to do the little windscreen wipers to the middle and back again and you can see what I mean about how I instantly get fallout on this side because the skin on this side does move an awful lot more <clears throat> If you've not done your base, you don't need to sweep the fallout away. It just fidgets me because I can see it in the viewfinder. So again, I'm going to take all the pigment off of this brush. Again, I'm going to very gently, you can really see the striping there now. Very, very gently buff over this corner. And you can see what I mean there about softening the edges but not actually blending it up the eye at all. And then we're going to do the same thing with the rest of that line. Tiny, 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 tiny wee circles. Just to blend it. And soften those edges and just give us a nice definition to the crease and then just link it up with the outer corner there that we've already laid down. I might pop a wee bit more colour just on the outer edge here. Now I think that's more even isn't it? And just blend that up into the line. Now if you look, I'm always trying to blend in an upwards movement. Uh, the reason I do this is because then <clears throat> it gives an illusion of your eyes being lifted at the edge, which gives you a much more friendly countenance. Um, if, if it droops down, it can give you a very sad, very tired looking expression. And let's face it, none of us want to look sad or tired. 
particularly if we're trying to hide the fact that we are A, sad, B, tired or C, all of the above. Now, I'm going to go in now with a flat packer brush like this. This is a So Eco brush. I would tell you what it's called, but I've had it so long the name's washed off. So, yeah, no idea. But it's nice and flat, comes up to a nice thin point at the top, and it's oval. Okay? And I prefer to use shimmer pigments wet, partly because they stick to your eye better, and partly because you tend to get a better payoff from the colour, particularly on cheaper shadows. Now I'm going to be using this. This is the Makeup Obsession Pigment Boost Fix. You don't have to use something that specifically says it's a pigment fix. You can use um, a finishing spray, something like MAC Fix Plus or Mario Badescu, which just sort of like blends all of your powders in together but doesn't. Uh, lengthen the wear of your makeup. You could use a priming spray, you could use a finishing spray, setting spray, uh, which would lengthen the wear, or you can just use clean water. So, I think I am going to go in with, let's go with this sort of old gold with a greeny, goldy undertone to it. Now you will see when you go into it with a packing brush you get a lot more kick up in the pan than we did with a blending brush. So I've packed the pigment on and I'm now going to wet this. I never go into a palette with a wet brush because that tends to give you hard pan where it seals over, gets really really shiny on the top and then you can't pick pigment up. So brush wet the pigment. Now this is not foiling your shadow. Foiling your shadow will be getting something like this, putting a liquid in, putting loose pigment in and mixing it either to a paste or a liquid to apply. That's foiling your shadows. This is just applying your shadow wet. And we're going to apply it to the two thirds of the lid that so far we haven't really paid much attention to. I tend to pack it along the bottom edge first and then again just tuck the tip of the bristles into the crease line and that surprisingly has actually got enough pigment in it to cover over that darker shimmer that we'd already laid down which is actually quite a pleasant surprise I'm just going to gently taper that off at the edge because I still want to see the dark at the very, very edge. Um, because I've got deep set eyes, I do have the problem that this will transfer up here during the day, but you'll only really see it if I wink at you or close my eyes because it transfers in the actual crease itself. So this gives you the cut crease look without actually having to bother about putting concealer down first. Now, to make sure I don't go back into the palette with a wet brush, I clean the brush off both sides in case the back of it's got wet as well. And then dry it off on my hand and you can see from that there's no pigment coming off of that brush at all. And then go back into the palette with a dry brush. some pigment on and wet the pigment and repeat This is actually really quite surprising me. I mean, I've had um, Thamadi lipsticks before and thoroughly enjoyed those, but this is the first time I've actually had one of their palettes. And I'm actually quite impressed with it. I have ordered a different colour um, 
not from Thamar D but from Beauty Glazed which is a brand that I do know that I've used quite a few times um, so I know the quality of those because I just want to see whether Thamar D or Beauty Glaze have actually produced a better dupe. Right, so I am going to go off camera and stick some foundation and whatnot on and I will be back to finish off underneath my eye. Please don't go anywhere. I'll see you just after this dissolvey bit. I'm back, as you can see. Uh, I stuck my Nars Mont Blanc on today. I'd forgotten quite how warm timed this is. Um, so, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit like The Simpsons at the moment, but... Mm. So, let's zoom in. And let's finish off the under eye. I do like how greens bring out the green of my eyes. Uh, if you're wondering what I've got here, here and here, this is the uh, Gerard Cosmetics Highlighter in shade Audrey. Um, one of my personal favourites and one of the few golds that someone who is pale and cool neutral can actually get away with. Um, I have got a link to uh, Gerard Cosmetics in my description box. It is affiliated so if you do order from it um, I get a few pennies back. Um, absolutely no obligation for you to use my link. You can just Google search Gerard and find them that way. But, you know, there is a link in the description box if you want it. So, let's go into this taupey brown. I'm going to use the flat top brush that I suggested that you use for sketching out if you had to raise your um, crease line. I'm just going to very gently smudge that right up tight underneath the bottom lash line. Now I've put mascara on the top lash line but not on the bottom one yet. I'm going to take this along to just about meet the inner corner highlight but not quite. Do the same this side. I know it looks like I've mascara but I haven't. It's just where the Lashes from the top level are touching the bottom. Lashes on the bottom one. I always flinch doing this side because obviously I have to rely on my viewfinder and muscle memory to not poke myself in the eye. Because by being blind, I have no peripheral vision, and uh, long-term viewers will know me poking myself in the eye it happens more often than not. So. Clean that brush off and then this is a very similar shape in that it's flat at the top but when you turn it sideways you can see this one is much fluffier and I'm going to very gently go into shall I risk a shimmer on the bottom mm, yes because I don't think that's going to show up and that's going to be too deep so, I'm going to have a bash with this one. This is one that I've got on my lid. So let's try this one. I'm just going to pick up just a little bit on the very tip of the bristles, look, you can see. Just tap off very gently. And then I'm just going to very, very carefully and very gently buff along that lower line, dragging it up to the inner highlight, just to soften that line we've put down and tie it into the look that we've done on the top with some green. I actually quite like how that looks. Once you've watched me a few times, you'll know that when I look at a palette, 
unless I've been specifically requested to use certain shades or I'm recreating something that's inspired me that I've seen somebody else do, I pretty much don't know what look I'm doing. Um, I kind of wait and see what colours call me, to be honest. Sometimes this works out well, other times not so much. Let's clean that brush off. And then just do the bottom lashes. Although the top lashes so far have been doing a pretty good job of doing the bottom lashes for me. But we'll just give them a little bit of extra definition. Just so they don't feel left out. And I might actually pop just a wee bit more on the outside edge of those top lashes. Just for a bit of extra. Because I really don't feel like putting false lashes on today. In fact, most of the time you'll find that I don't actually use false lashes. I tend to just use mascara. Um, and that's, that's a personal preference. Right, so I'm going to go in with one of the Jeffrey lipsticks from his holiday collection 2018. This one's called Karma. Now, you look at that and you think, ooh, it's going to be sparkly. No, the sparkles are actually in the plastic container. So, or acrylic. My tip for putting lipstick on when you have a doe foot applicator. Doesn't smell really. So initially, do the inner part of your bottom lip. Then turn the applicator sideways and use the edge of it to line the outside of the bottom lip. Now for the top lip, we're going to use the 45 degree rule. So, hold your doe foot straight up. Now turn it to a 45 degree angle and you're going to do the inner part of your cupid's bow and the outside of your lip in exactly the same angle. You then come back to the middle, turn it 45 the other way and repeat. You now have a very nice M. So you now turn your die foot upside down and go from the corner of your mouth to the line you've made. On both sides. And then just fill in the rest of the top lip. And that is how easy it is to apply liquid lipstick when it has a dye foot. And Create a Cupid's bow if you don't have one, or emphasise the one that you do have. Right. I am going to pause you briefly while I do something with this mop of hair, and I'll be back with my final thoughts on the palette. Hey, I'm back. 
as you can see, hair doesn't know what it's doing this morning. So, what do I think of the Femar D? They're actually calling it the Aurora palette rather than the Emerald palette. Um, as I said, this cost me three quid. But the look that it gives you certainly doesn't look like a three quid palette. Yes, that lightest green needed quite a bit of work to build it up, but it did build. The other colours that I've used so far, because obviously I've used six of the nine, um, the other colours are absolutely fine. There was plenty of pigment in the deeper shades. It blended out easily enough. Um, it didn't do anything weird. It wasn't clinging to areas. It wasn't refusing to blend. Um, even that shimmer blended out nicely through the crease. And um, as you can see, the shimmer on the lid. Again, plenty of opacity to it. So I'm actually really quite impressed with this. I'm going to wait until um, the Beauty Glaze one arrives that I've tried and then whichever of the two I feel has a better formula I'll probably go back and buy the blue one and maybe the red one and, and no, maybe the orange one because I've got blood sugar so I don't need a red one. Anyway, um, I like this. I like this a lot. Um, I will try to remember throughout the day to take some photos so we can see how much this fades, if at all. I'm expecting it to fade. Um, I'm certainly expecting the shimmers to not be quite so bright by the end of the evening. Um, if I don't get a chance to take photos through the day, I will definitely take a photograph before I take all this off tonight. So you've at least got a at the start and at the end for comparison purposes. Uh, yeah. So, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications so that you get told every time I upload another one of these videos. And talking of another one of these videos, you want to go and watch another one now, don't you? You know you do. This was such a nice, quick, easy tutorial. You want to go watch another one. And once you've watched mine, it would be awesome if you could please check out the ladies from the A Beauty YouTuber Growth Group who are listed in my description box. Right? As ever, my darlings, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.